at a seminar in London on the 20th of June 2018. NEC introduced the NEC4 Alliance contract, an innovative multi-party agreement designed to establish a collaborative alliance for the successful delivery of major projects and programmes. In contrast to traditional contracts, this unique approach fosters even more enhanced collaboration between clients, contractors and suppliers. Before we take a closer look at this new contract, please subscribe to our channel. We release a new video every single week and it really helps us reach out to more like-minded professionals. For those seeking a long-term collaborative contract to undertake a large-scale multidisciplinary project or programme, the NEC4 Alliance contract may be the perfect option. By bringing together multiple suppliers under one agreement, this contract promotes a united front in achieving the client's objectives. With the NEC4 Alliance contract, all parties are encouraged to work harmoniously, sharing both risks and rewards. The idea is that this will result in a deeper collaboration among consultants and contractors, creating an environment of shared interests and a minimised potential for disputes. NEC have always put collaboration at the heart of their contracts, but NEC see this new alliance contract as the next step towards creating a true alliance between the different parties involved in a construction project, with all members of the alliance having an equal voice. Previous NEC contracts included X clauses, which were optional and could be added to the main contract if desired. The optional clause X12 detailed multi-party collaboration which incentivised suppliers to collaborate. The NEC4 Alliance contract builds on this concept and establishes it as the core, creating a requirement to collaborate to achieve objectives and targets of the project. So how is the NEC4 Alliance contract structured? The structure consists of a number of levels as displayed in the graphic. The Alliance Board consists of what the contract terms partners. It is made up of a representative from each individual Tier 1 contractor and also includes a representative from the client. The Alliance Board undertakes tasks including setting the strategy, allocating work, appointing the Alliance Manager and is the first point of referral for disputes. All Alliance Board members must act unanimously and have equal voting rights. The Alliance Manager. This is equivalent to the Project Manager role in a traditional NEC contract. They manage the Alliance in accordance with the contract and implementation plan and have a duty to obey instructions from the Alliance Board. The Alliance Delivery Team. They deliver the work of the Alliance. This consists of the client and each individual partner, which could be a combination of civil contractors, designers and equipment suppliers. So as you can see, the client plays a dual role. Not only do they have certain powers and responsibilities outside of the Alliance, but they also become an active member of the Alliance itself. Remember, this contract thrives on collaboration. That means most decisions are made by the Alliance board unanimously. It's a team effort, and they must agree that there won't be any claims against each other, except for some very limited exceptions, and we're talking serious breaches of contract. Matrone a commercial hub to your business.